Hey there, welcome. I'm Damien and I'm just another starving artist on the internet. It has been a while and it's because I caught a kind of a bad cold. And it, was, it wasn't really too bad, but I just took forever to get better and my voice was not in a state to talk for 10 minutes straight. So that's why I haven't been around for a while. Today we're going to talk about art style. There are plenty of videos on YouTube telling you how to find your art style, how to find your niche and such. Well, I want to go against all of that and tell you the opposite, because not many people talk about why it doesn't matter. Well, why it shouldn't matter, because obviously it does for some reason. But before that, as usual, today's character is a living statue called Anthea. She's an original character from Mysterious Manor, a game that I'm currently working on, and if if you like my work, there's a link to all my social media in the description below, and if you would like to support me, you can find my coffee page in the same link, but if you want something in return for your support, you can get a physical print of this one drawing from my shop, available in 4 different sizes, or a keychain featuring the same character. On top of that, I will be launching my Patreon next week, there will be an announcement in my social media. You'll be able to get some extra stuff, like more works in progress and behind the scenes, as well as some extra streams, and see my videos a week earlier. But now now back on topic, why do we want an art style in the first place? And what do I mean by having an art style? The way I will describe it is as that of an identity. Artists chase after an aesthetic consistency so that anyone that is familiar with their work will immediately recognize them as the artist. Searching for an art style is usually advised within the context of social media. If someone finds one of your drawings and they like it, maybe they will go to your profile and see that you consistently produce visually similar work that appeals to their taste. And now you have a new follower slash subscriber, and maybe they want to get a commission from you, and they know what to expect because they know what your work looks like. If, instead, all your drawings are radically different from each other, and this person doesn't know what to expect on your next post, and they only like a couple of your drawings anyway, then nothing, I guess. You just missed a potential follower and or customer, and I know we want to be successful as an artist as fast as possible, I understand that, but success for the sake of success means very little. And I know there is a purpose to this kind of success. Bigger social media presence leads to monetization, sponsors, potential customers for commissions and all that stuff. But personally, as an artist, I want to be successful doing what I like. And I know that after a while, I will not like that art style anymore and I will be somewhat forced to keep it because that's what the audience I gather is here for. And considering my love-hate relationship with art, it will just turn into a hate-hate one. <laughs> There's no point in pursuing art like that to me. And I'm assuming I'm not the only one, that's why I'm making this video. Finding your art style, if you're truly looking for one, will take time. Deciding to draw in a specific way is only the first step. As you work on new drawings following this aesthetic identity that you have chosen, you will still need to experiment and fine-tune many aspects of it. A lot of people focus too much on superficial aspects of a style when they decide to adopt it, and that's okay. That's part of the style and honestly what most people will notice almost exclusively. But there's so much more to an art style than the final polish. I believe art style is more about decision-making and having a deep understanding of the subject you're trying to portray and the way you want to portray it. This understanding can only be achieved through a lot of experience. Deciding on how detailed, how realistic, what type of line art, if you even want any line art at all, colors, and even deeper than that, deciding on a composition and how you want to structure the drawing and how you will approach your workflow. Workflow is the process that you will follow while working on a piece. Those are all things that will take a lot of time to develop. And the way you use them and think about them will change as you grow and mature as an artist. Many artists will talk about the different aspects of a style as if there were some sort of a slider, like more realistic or more cartoony, and more detail and less detail. And I think that's a very oversimplified and strict way of seeing it. And I have to admit that talking about art styles is very difficult, because there isn't a defined pathway or a list of skills that you need to master to get your art style. It is a very subjective thing and there are lots of artists who may perhaps not be as skilled as others, who have found their style and they feel comfortable with it. And on the other hand, I don't think I'll ever find my style because I don't really want to find one. 
Now, for the rest of the video, I want to talk about some of the negative sides of obsessing over stylization, especially with younger artists, followed by some examples of artists I like to support some of my points regarding styles. If you're watching this channel, there's a high chance that, if you're an artist, your art is heavily inspired by anime and manga. I haven't heard of this issue in a while, so I don't know if it's still a thing, but about the time I was a late teenager, there was a lot of talk about art teachers not liking anime. Again, I don't know if this is still an issue people are talking about, but it boils down to a different problem that is still very much going on. This issue originates from beginner artists attempting to imitate anime style without understanding any artistic foundation, or having a very limited understanding of it, and then receiving in harsh feedback or getting rejected from art school and stuff like that. I'm not saying that there aren't some snob art teachers out there that hate on anime-inspired styles, although that's mostly out of ignorance, as many of them are only exposed to anime as the style that all these beginners do and don't, under don't actually understand its potential. On the side of the artists submitting these drawings, well, uh, let's start with something kind of unrelated to style. You should do some research and have a good hard think about whether art school is the right choice for you. And really, if you just want to draw anime, don't apply for a fine art school. But regarding styles, artists with more experience can often tell if something is a mistake or a purposeful stylistic choice. You shouldn't use your style as an excuse for mistakes. Now, perhaps you don't see the mistakes and that's why you claim it's all stylistic. I know that happens, I have done that in the past. But that's all the more reason why you should prioritize practicing more fundamentals. You are at a stage where you can't yet judge the quality of your own work accurately. And it might still be too early for you to claim a style. And I don't want you to take this as a bad thing. At this point, the only way is up and you will improve. With that said, a big portion of these art fundamentals that we're supposed to practice have a lot of overlap with realism. That leads to many young artists into the assumption that in order to develop a style, they must first master realism. Since the stylization is simply a distortion of, of what is real. Uh, no, just, just no. I've met a few people that believe this to the point that, even if they wanted to, they would not draw anything that wasn't realism, at least not until they had fully mastered it. Some of them quit art, eventually, because it destroyed them. A self-imposed abstinence like that is not healthy for an artist or any creative mind. There is no clear definition of what it means to master realism. It is an idea they had conjured without understanding the implications of it and having no idea how long it would last. They believed that the reward for being able to do realism perfectly meant that they could draw anything at all, and that's not really true. There is a type of experimental stylization that comes after one gets comfortable enough with realism. It is literally known as post-realism, but that's not what anyone in this group was actually aiming towards. But yeah, some of them quit, the others, I actually don't know what they're doing, but I will be surprised if they're still doing art. Of course, you should practice some realism. Not necessarily quote-unquote master it, but develop your observational skills and understand what real things look like. You should never use your style as an excuse to not practice fundamentals, but it doesn't need to consume your passion for art to the point that you deny yourself of drawing what you want in the way you want. On the other hand, there are those that go too far into stylization. I don't mean just neglecting the practice of fundamentals, but focusing too much in one specific style to the detriment of their general all-around skills. Of course, you will get better at that style and maybe that's what you want, but if that's all you do, you might fall into repetition and stall your improvement massively after a while. I have also run into artists that will not draw certain things because it doesn't fit their style that may not come out the way I intended. What I mean is that they have one way of drawing, let's say, people, and they have a bit of same face syndrome, as in they won't draw different types of humans because they only focus on one type of young beautiful characters. This is very common with Instagram artists because pretty girls and Instagram just go together. And that's fine, you're free to post work that you want to post and nothing else. We are not discussing that. What I don't agree with is treating your stylistic choice as a limitation rather than a tool that you can choose to use or not. So, 
some artists with interesting styles that I want to talk about. All of them are manga artists simply because of the vast body of work that is available and how easily you can compare a wide variety of subjects and how their style evolved progressively over the years. I want to start with Norihiro Yagi, the artist for a manga called Claymore. It is one of the most visually impressive manga I've ever seen. But then you look at his earlier works and it doesn't look like it was made by the same person. It's not just that it looks different, but he goes through like five different styles in one of his works. And you can tell he still had a lot to learn, but he did his homework and Claymore happened. On a similar note, Ogure Ito, or All Greats as he goes by, improved so much on the run of a single manga. At the beginning of the manga Tenjo Tenge, his art style had, let's say, a very generic 90s manga look and was quite inconsistent and amateurish as well. If you look up some of his work, you might be wondering what am I talking about, but if you can get your hands on the first couple of volumes from Tenjo Tenge and compare it to the later volumes, you will understand what I mean. It's normal for manga artists to improve and grow as they work on manga for many years, but I don't think I've ever seen any other artist improve and develop this much this fast. Another prominent name in the art style talk is, of course, Hirohiko Araki, author of Jojo's Bizarre Adventures. Everyone knows about the crazy look of Jojo characters, but that is something that came later to his style. Looking at some of his earlier work, you can see that the way the characters are drawn are just very typical of 70s and 80s manga when these works were published. What made his style stand out was instead the way he decided to present these scenes and the very well-known Jojo poses. Araki also does his homework when it comes to art studying, as these poses are inspired by Renaissance paintings and sculptures. His earlier drawing techniques were not exactly well developed, but he compensated by experimenting in other areas, and the skills that he has now eventually came with time as he kept drawing and potentially studying for many years. And the reason I chose these three artists specifically is because of that. The development of their style can be more directly tied to an improvement in their fundamentals rather than a focus on the style itself. My whole point with this video is that if you're currently frustrated because you can't find an art style or you don't know what direction you want to go, my advice is to just keep drawing and studying. Not just styles, not just realism. Just draw. Draw it all without judgement or expectations. Make art a bit of an adventure, the way it should be. And that's all I have to say for now, so I hope you found this video helpful and insightful. If only a little, please let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with anything I said, or if you have any suggestions for things you want me to talk about in future videos. And you know, like, subscribe and do all the YouTube things. We're seeing now the final drawing, and remember that if you like my work, this socials, shop, coffee page, I told them about them earlier in the description. And keep an eye on my Patreon coming out next week. So yeah, keep drawing, keep getting better, and I'll see you next time.